and welcome to Maker.io. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the antenna spring and see how easy it is to actually make. Now, what are antenna springs and why would you want to use them? Well, if you look at the animal kingdom, a lot of insects have antenna. And what these things allow insects to do include detect chemicals, sniff things out and feel objects around them and obstacles so they can tell if they can walk on it or if it's something they should avoid. Now in the robotic world when we talk about antennas we're really just talking about something that is used for object detection so when the antenna hits something it knows it's hit an object and therefore we can either react it by turning towards it, turning away from it, maybe engaging an arm or something else. So we can build it with just a bit of wire and it's actually very very simple. Now the first thing you're going to need is some wire. This is solid core wire, not multi-core. It has to be solid core because you need to be able to keep its shape when, when you turn it into a spring and then put the antenna inside. You'll also need a small round object like a screwdriver or something because you need to make a spring and wrap it around the screwdriver so you've got a nice structure. And then you'll want some wire clippers too. So let's build the spring. We now have a piece of solid core wire with the sheath taken off, and all we're gonna do is turn this into a large spring. Now, you don't wanna make the spring too big, you wanna make it rather short and fat. And it's, just, it's just a few, just a couple of turns really, just enough for the wire, or the antenna wire to sit inside of. So we're gonna sort of turn that into a little spring, like so. You can probably neaten the edges so they're both the same size as well. And now it's time to make the feeler part. Now the feeler, has the insulation left on it, except for the part where the feeder is fed through this little spring coil we made. Put the feeder through the, through the coil, and we keep the two, the feeder wire part here and the spring, disconnected, they mustn't touch. So now that we've built our little feeder, we can go ahead and test to see how it works. So all we need is a continuity tester to prove how it works. So when the feeler is not pushing against an object, there's no connection between the spring and the feeder at the base, but when it touches an object, you can use that to determine that you have indeed touched an object. So that's just a simple introduction for how feeders work. Thank you for watching and see you next time.